Hello friends, followers and channel members and welcome to this video today looking at the application that I use for all my cabin announcements and sounds which many of you have asked about and that is self-loading cargo. Now self-loading cargo is a straightforward little mod add-on that you can use with uh, X-Plane, P3D, FSX and of course Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as I use it uh, in all my live streams. Many of you have asked for a quick tutorial video and a little bit of a walkthrough on how it all works, so I thought we'd uh, take a little look in this video. As you can see, it is not expensive and for $12.99, whilst the program is still being developed, there's many new features to come and you can see just some of the things listed here on the website that is already available, but it is constantly being updated, so well worth a purchase for $12.99. 99. It's also very editable, so you will have heard lots of EasyJet cabin announcements when uh, when I'm streaming, and we're going to have a look at uh, how you can get those in as well. So once you've uh, gone ahead, made your purchase, downloaded it, and unlocked it with your serial key, the first time you load it, it will look like this. Now I must also tell you that you do need FSUI PC 7 to be running for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It does require that, so be aware that it, uh, if you do load this up and FSUI PC is not running, <coughs> then you'll just get a not connected sign up, uh, up here. So make sure you've got that running and then you'll get the box as you can see. The first time it loads then, this is something very similar to what you'd see, you need to select your aircraft and then <coughs> the cabin layout is by default. You can go in and edit the cabin layouts but to be perfectly honest with you, uh, I don't bother just because it's got default uh, cabin layouts for different kinds of aircraft that you select and you can see the list is quite extensive so we can just leave that of course at the Airbus A320 for today. You can then choose your sound pack, I'll talk about that in, uh, in a little while. You can then check uh, what cabin equipment you would like. Now unfortunately at the moment you do have to select either movie screens or Wi-Fi. Not really applicable to the low cost airlines of course but you do need to pick one or the other. Uh, so I've just left that at uh, movie screens for uh, for now and once you've put in your uh, number of passengers you can start the flight. There is of course then the advanced settings which once you open that up you can type in your aircraft, uh, your, your airline, uh, put in a flight number, your planned cruise, altitude, um, departure, arrival code, what time you uh, plan to depart, what time you plan to arrive, and this is of course so the announcements know whether to play uh, apologies for being late or well done, we're on time, etc, etc. Uh, or of course, to uh, save you a little bit of time, you can simply import everything from Simbrief, if you use Simbrief to um, create your, your flight plans. So let's have a look at the basic settings, this little S up here, once you click that. Now, all of these are very self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go through and uh, show you every single one of these, as I say. Um, all very self-explanatory, but we will just have a look at a, at a couple, which are, uh, which are quite important. So, the voices, obviously, if you want to hear the voices, you need to make sure that they're all ticked enabled. Now, the captain's voice, again, self-explanatory, crew voice, and the ground crew. Now, at the moment, the ground crew is not working. I think that's a feature to come at, uh, at some point. So, these will all play the voices already featured in the default sound pack. And if we move on, you can also uh, look at the options down here, so you've got automatically address the cabin. Well, I leave that unchecked because I want to choose when I want the cabin announcements to uh, to play, so I leave that unchecked. And of course, you've got the 18 knots callout or the 100 knots callout if you're uh, flying Airbus, Boeing, etc. And then of course, the positive rate gear up sign. And again, it's very self-explanatory and, uh, and nice. So I'm going to talk to uh, talk a little bit about the TTS, the text-to-speech settings, a, a little bit later on. So I will come back to that, uh, but let's just keep going through. So one of the things that I have noticed in uh, 
Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is leaving this unchecked is very beneficial. So automatically open doors when you start uh, the flight on blocks uh, or on the blocks at the destination. Um, <coughs> you may have seen in some of my live streams that at times if this has been left checked then the cabin crew start to fight with the doors which is a little bit annoying. So that's because sometimes there's a bit of a conflict of interest between the simulators opening the doors and uh, self-loading cargo. So if you leave that unchecked then you are in control of the doors either using uh, an external mod like pushback helper uh, or when the jetway comes uh, comes in. So definitely worth leaving that unchecked if you're in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. In flight services then, so again automate the seatbelt signs, I leave that unchecked because as the pilot I want to be in control of when the seatbelt signs are uh, on. Automate the in-flight services. Again, I want to be in control of uh, that. And of course, you can then select which ones you want to have and repeat throughout. Uh, in fact, just looking, that one should actually be checked. Not sure why that was, was unchecked, but <coughs> as I leave automate turned off, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be able to choose when you want these to, uh, when you want to use and serve your hot drinks, serve your food and things like that. Again, you can then change how long it takes at the bottom to uh, serve your passengers food and drinks and uh, I can let you have a little play with those. This one's quite interesting as well. You can change the loading time by saying how many seconds per passenger it takes. Moving on to sound effects. This is all personal preference, how loud you want everything to be uh, played, etc. Uh, passengers just shout and scream during stressful flying events. Well, uh, the moment I find it a little, even though I've left this turned on, I do find that uh, a little bit overbearing. I think banking anything over 15 degrees will get the uh, get the passengers screaming. Um, so I've left it turned on just for uh, a bit of comedy effect, really, during the live streams. But of course, you can turn uh, turn that off. Uh, penalties then, because it does give you a sort of reward at the end and let you know how well it thinks you uh, you have done. You can go through and turn off any uh, any of those. Third party services then, well this is where we get the Simbrief integration. So as you can see there I've popped in my Simbrief username, EasyJet SimPilot, which means that I can now import from Simbrief. Uh, so that's where you pop in the information for uh, for that to work. And then there's just a couple more tabs, the compatibility tab, so use the system Zulu time instead of the simulator's Zulu time. Um, and that just ensures that I'm uh, I'm on the correct Zulu time all uh, all the time that it's used, uh, and then of course we've got the uh, credits if you wish to uh, read a little bit more about those. Once you've gone through and checked what you want, then you can close that, and there's no settings to save. Just everything you've done there is instantly saved. So we can just go ahead and close that down. So now that I've uh, got a Simbrief username in there, <coughs> I can import from Simbrief. As you can see, it fills everything in except the airline, so I'm just going to pop EasyJet in, uh, in there. As you can see, this is set up from a flight that I did previously, which is from Belfast to Jersey, uh, and then we would start the flight. Also, take note of the Zulu time uh, for your departure time. If you have created your flight plan in Simbrief, this will be the time that uh, is shown on the operational flight plan in Simbrief. If you've created your flight plan, say two, three hours ago, and then you're coming into the simulator, you want to check that, just because otherwise you're gonna get announcements saying we apologize for delays, or we're sorry we're late, uh, even though you may not be. So make sure you do set that to the correct departure time that you are scheduled for. As you can see, as I'm doing that, the arrival time changes on, uh, depending on the time it thinks you're going to take to uh, fly the route. So again, quite nice. Alright, so <coughs> let's have a look then at the sound packs and the nitty gritty and the main feature of the uh, self-loading cargo program is the cabin announcements. So as you can see, I have got three sound packs at the moment. Default is the one you will only have when you first install the program and I have got an EasyJet sound pack and a fly-by-wire sound pack. Let's have a little look at those. So, 
once you've installed it, if you install it to the default location on your main drive <coughs> in Program Files, Land Logic, Self Loading Cargo, and here you can see the sound packs. So in this folder here is where you get the sound packs shown. As you can see, they match up default EasyJet fly by wire, default EasyJet fly by wire. When you first install the program, of course, you'll only have the default. All of these folders contain the announcements that you are going to hear depending on certain situations. So, just reading from the top, an announcement uh, that they're serving alcoholic drinks or tea, uh, food, in-flight movie, and of course the safety notice that you hear as, uh, as you are pushing back. There's then, as you scroll through, all very self-explanatory as to which announcement it is, and you can see there are quite a few. One of the things then, if you look into these folders, you can see there is normally more than one announcement in them. As you can see, so I've just clicked a, uh, an announcement regarding alcohol. In fact, I'm, that's a bad example. Um, the reason that says muffled is because the cabin announcements you can, if you wish, there is an option in those settings to play the cabin announcements as being muffled. Obviously, if you're in the flight deck, then the cabin announcements are going to sound muffled from inside the cockpit as opposed to being in the aircraft cabin. Uh, but if I just come out of that and find a... Uh, a captain's a captain's announcement Just bear with me so I'm trying to find one which has more than one okay so here we go uh, so this would be the announcements that would play once we had reached our cruise level and as you can see there is one two three four there's five different ones and all of these would play randomly however one and two would play randomly for different flights, but you can rename them so as long as it's got the word afternoon in and evening and morning, then this would be in play if you were departing at that particular time. Now, I'm not going to get too bogged down with that because the manual does a great explanation of how things work, but basically everything that is in this folder, the Captain's Cruise Level folder, will get played uh, randomly. So it'll be different every flight and that just helps vary things up. If we have a look at this last one, the text file, let me bring this over, you can see there is a script for the announcement, ladies and gentlemen from the cockpit just to let you know etc etc. Now have a look at these little bits here, we've got flight level in brackets, we've got major delays so expect to arrive in whatever arrival city is down here etc etc the way to get this to be announced is in your settings if you go back to the voices instead of using the mp3 files which are recorded and obviously cannot be changed if you preferred you can use text to speak so if this is selected then it will be whatever is written in this text file that is going to be uh, that is going to be announced now this is really good for realism because that will change every time with the expected of cruise flight level um, and then which city you're arriving at and it changes all the way through so a lot of the announcements um, for the cabin crew etc when you arrive it says welcome to whichever city you've arrived in the local time um, and it uh, it just makes it quite realistic but obviously because it's text to speak it doesn't sound particularly realistic so if we just do a quick test we should be able to hear a uh, a test on uh, on that unfortunately for some reason I'm not quite sure that's uh, not w oh hang on let's select an actual uh, you would have to select an actual voice for you to be uh, to be able to play that but I don't use text to speak just because it doesn't sound very realistic I much prefer to have the cabin announcements uh, recorded so if you're using text to speech the ones you will hear are the text files and that is what is going to be read out by your computer if you're not using text to speech then it's going to play any of the mp3 files that you find in here 
Okay, so what about creating your own sound facts? Well, as you'll have seen on my uh, streams, then I have the EasyJet sound pack. Now, if I go to go back a folder to the sound packs folder, you can see I have got not all of the same folders that we saw in the default, but most of them. So it means that it's going to play a specific um, announcement with regards to EasyJet. So for example, uh, let's just have a little look. If we go to a crew thank you and look to play this, see if that'll come up for you. So that's just a quick thank you, and again, you do have a text-to-speech option. Um, a seatbelt sign is off. As you can see, there are three different ones in there. The the there we go. And the safety announcement, very easy jet specific. Ladies and gentlemen, we now ask for your attention while we take you through the. Okay. Now these sound files that I have got in here have been basically uh, I trolled the internet and it actually took me quite a bit of time to get these all set up um, but they are there and of course you don't have to use these yeah, you can use whichever airline you want to uh, want to use and the way to set the, the way that I set this up is these folder names must match exactly what you find in the default so all I did for this was I literally copied and pasted into a new folder titled EasyJet and then I changed the audio files or the text files inside each of these folders so as you can see there's four different ones that a different one will play each time for uh, for that particular event so it's very very easy to do if you have not got a specific folder in here that matches up with an event found in the default folders then it will just play the default sound so for example um, the captain crew letting the crew know that we are uh, die after a diversion that we are deboarding for example I don't have that in my EasyJet uh, sound pack and that's fine um, it just means that if it did need to play that announcement after we had diverted then it would play the default one and not the EasyJet one so it would still play you a sound it just wouldn't be um, one that I'd specifically uh, put in there uh, the reason I've also got then a, a fly-by-wire one is because as we're doing test flights I obviously didn't want to be using an EasyJet sound pack so I just created a, a, a different one so if we just go and uh, have a look we've just got a text to speak uh, just there or we've got a slightly different audio file to play just here and as you can see it says on a fly-by-wire test flight uh, so nice and easy cr to create very very easy to uh, to set up and use and I think that's one of the things that a lot of people wanted to see how you actually go and set up your own sound packs so <coughs> it is quite a bit of work depending on how um, how realistic you want to set the sound packs up and there are lots of sound packs available to download on the internet now the self-loading cargo um, program does have its own discord server where you can go and download them so if you join their discord you can uh, find plenty of sound packs on there and it literally is just a case of copying paste downloading them then uh, creating a folder within here uh, if we create a folder within here we can just put this in uh, let's call it British Airways shall we there we go and then we may have to restart the program but yeah so if we just quickly close that down and then restart the program just give that 30 seconds or so there we go uh, but if I have a look now at the sound packs there's an option for British Airways obviously it would just play all the default sounds because there is nothing in there alright so let me just go back to EasyJet and if we import that one from Simbrief again just so that works and type in EasyJet spell that correctly and to be honest you don't actually need to pop this in this would only be read if using text to speak if you're playing mp3 uh, files um, then obviously they're not uh, they're not editable so it would uh, only work 
and say thank you for flying EasyJet or welcome on board EasyJet during a text-to-speech a uh, announcement. So if we just start the flight and then you get all of the icons. So obviously ready for boarding well if we play if we select that you'll then hear uh, should hear my announcement saying that we're about ready to get going. And there we go. No problem. Obviously, as you can see at the moment, uh, the alcohol signs, the tea and coffee signs, and the food signs are greyed out. They will become active once we are uh, once we are airborne, and you can then select those to uh, start the uh, start the cabin service. The seatbelt sign now, if you're flying the Airbus A32NX from flybar wire, you don't need to touch that because it is integrated into the seatbelt sign switch in the cockpit, which is quite nice. Beforehand, I had to turn it on in the cockpit and turn it on just here, but they are both now linked, so uh, so that's quite neat as uh, as well. Uh, the way to start passengers boarding would be to open the aircraft door. I uh, don't think we can do that. Well, we can do that using self-loading cargo, as you can see the door isn't actually opened. If you did use a third-party app like Pushback Elper, as soon as you open the door, then it would start to board. You can turn up the uh, passenger sounds by using a map by hovering over the seatbelt sound and uh, mouse wheel adjusts that. So if I turn that up, you should hear the passenger sounds getting louder and louder. Turn those back down. And, of course, the exact same with the uh, cabin music. At which point then, of course, you can move on to the next announcement. And every time you click on this little announcement button here, even though it's greyed out, you will see whether it'll either say no announcements or there is an announcement. So we could play the next announcement, let them know that we are delayed. Ladies and gentlemen, from the cockpit, just to let you know, we're expecting a short delay while we finalise some of the paperwork up here, but we should be departing in a few minutes. Thank you. And you'll notice that obviously was not my voice, and that is because in the self-loading cargo sound packs and EasyJet folder, I don't have a captain announcing a delayed folder in there. So if I now go back to the default folder <coughs> and we have a look, we've got captain arrival delay and departure delay. So that will be the sound that has just played. If we play that one, there you go. So if I wanted to go in and record that one myself, what I would do is I would copy that folder there, go into my EasyJet, paste that, and we just need to give administrator permission so we can continue. There we go. Now it is there. Obviously at this moment it's the same one, but I could go in and record my own. And that's all you would need to do. You you could record one, two, three, four, five, and it would then play a different one every time that announcement was uh, was made. So hopefully that has explained the very basics of how the self-loading cargo uh, add-on works. It's great for immersion and you'll have heard it all the way through my live streams if you've watched any of those in the past. So highly recommended. If you do have any questions please let me know in the comments down below and I'll look forward to uh, reading and coming back to you with uh, questions, uh, with answers for uh, your questions. If you found that useful please do hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell for more videos regarding Microsoft Flight Simulator fly-by-wire and of course to be notified of when we begin in any live streams. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much for watching.